What is a crack lads and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at some defending tips. So this isn't a defending tutorial. Let me know if you want a dedicated one and what buttons to press and stuff like that. I would recommend checking out Spoonie Pizzas who has done one. I would also recommend checking out Weza and Seppo uh, Pezep on Twitch. I will leave the links in the description below. But to be honest, everyone plays differently and there's a lot of stuff that tutorials, in my opinion, don't cover because a lot of the stuff that you need to focus on is not about pressing buttons or it's not about, you know, it's not about, um, it's not about certain ways of defending. It's more about kind of reading your opponent, you know, stopping passing lanes. And look, you'll see from clips here, lads, right? <sighs> playing online, right? And you'll have seen me playing in Dream Team. And you, you guys watching this video will know you've been on the receiving end of some games where you're left scratching your head thinking, what more can I do there to stop the opponent scoring? You've been on, you know, situations where like this, you'll see in this clip, I win the ball back with Vieira, I intercept it with Vieira, I then lose it back, I intercept it with Maldini, I get across into another position, I get the header clear up Piao, it falls to him and he just slots it home. But there is a way that you can kind of limit a lot of them goals being leaked, right? And starting those off is setting your team up the correct way, right? So we're going to go through couple of maybe five or six tips of things that I think will instantly improve your game without having to learn, you know, the ins and outs and when to press this button and when to press that button because every game is different. Every player that you come up against is going to be different. But this stuff translates to kind of making you not make mistakes, right? So the first thing I would focus on if you were a newcomer, especially to the game, is setting what formation that you want. Now, I have a dedicated video on how to set your team up correctly, picking formations, tactics, players, all that, right? But just as a cover all, right? If you're going to choose between um, a four at the back or a five at the back or a three at the back, right? What you need to do is if you are playing three at the back or five at the back, you need to have two fast mobile defenders and one solid rock with really high defensive stats, right? If you are playing four, four, two or four, two, three, one or four strike or four defenders at the back with two fullbacks or three CBs or whatever way you want to do it, you will want to have the pair of them and you will want to have one really solid defense-minded defender and you'll want to have a fast, mobile, versatile defender. So we're going to go over to eFootballDB and show you a couple of examples of this. Now, also with the anchoring and the individual instructions, and I am going through this a bit quick, lads, because I've already covered it in like a 16-minute video and another 20-minute video, I think it was in episode 14 or 15 of Dream Team Chronicles. So I would definitely check out those videos if you're kind of thinking I'm going through this fast because I've covered it in about 40 minutes worth of video. But we will cover this again in a little bit with the anchoring, which I think is one of the most vital, important parts of Dream Team. But all these individual instructions, just read them, have a look through it and see what way you want your team to defend, right? If you are playing a three centre-back partnership or a two-man centre-back partnership, as I've already said to you, you will want one rock, a tall guy that can defend the aerial threat, that's strong defensive stats, that high, has high defensive sta uh, stats, don't have to worry too much about his speed, right? So if you take a look at, say, somebody, even if your budget is kind of low, obviously, if you get Van Dijk or you get Ramos or you get one of those big boys like Koulibaly, they're going to have insane stats. But if you look at somebody like Rugani, right? He's 22,000 GP. Anybody should be able to afford a, a center half like this, even starting off or using a second squad. You can see to here that his defensive stats are really, really high. You know, they're up in the nearly the 90s. Now, we're going to pair him, if we are looking at that, with a really fast mobile center half right so you've got the yin to his yang that anything if you come up against a two-man strikers or usually it's a 4-3-3 three, three, your left and right backs will be fast enough to be able to combat the wingers that you're coming up against right but if you come up somebody like Benzema compared to somebody like Romario it's a different challenge that faces you because somebody that has Romario like me even I'm going to play for his, towards his speed so you need a fast center half right so look at this guy from Sevilla Kunde. He's got really, really nice stats, and he's kind of like an, a nice guy that you could buy if you have a lot of money. Similarly with Timber, right? Now, we don't need to max out his stats like this. I'm just doing it to exaggerate the point of having a really fast center half, right? But there are a lot of options out there for very, very little budget. If you do have not that much GP, um, you can mix and match around. Even this guy here, he's a giant. You could kind of mix and match around where you want to go, right? Now, I did mention about the anchoring, right? And we're going to talk about why it's so good. And you will see a lot of clips on this with uh, Patrick Vieira, who I have set to anchoring. So we're going to go through the clips and then I'm going to show you how to set it up, right? 
So from here, we're talking about uh, slowing it down just on the right side, right? I'm pressing, I'm kind of pressing, pressing, pressing. I'm trying to get the ball back, but I'm not committing too much, right? But just focus on where Patrick Vieira is, right? Look where Vieira is. He's splitting the center backs, right? Because he's anchoring and he's falling back and he's pretty much defending against the attacking midfielder or he's against the center forward, depending on his position and depending on the opponent's formation. So Patrick Vieira is going to be slotting back. I don't need to worry about him until I get an opening to make a challenge, which I get a bit lucky there from a heavy touch. Look where Patrick Vieira is though, lads. He's perfectly positioned that even if that ball comes true, it's still a three on three or a three on four with Maldini to cut back in from the left back, right? So that is what you need to do if you are struggling with a DMF. Now, Patrick Vieira, it helps that he's the best DMF in the game, but if you get somebody like Kante or somebody like uh, Casemiro, they can also play that role. And you'll see, right, I'm not controlling this. I'm not controlling Patrick Vieira manually here. You can see that I'm controlling Pedri, and then I switch, and I'm trying to switch to uh, Piaul. Patrick Vieira is just tracking because of his anchoring and because of his defensive setup in, in the formation that I've set. So as I said, when you are looking at it, the ball breaks down. Eventually, Patrick Vieira is in there as kind of like a third center back as I'm playing a 4-4-2. And this is how you put it on. So again, I've covered this in a, like 40 minutes of video so far, but it's pretty much easy enough to put on individual instructions. Go to your uh, AI instructions there and you can choose defensive for one of them or you can choose anchoring or whichever way that you want to do it. You can put these on your left backs and your right backs if you're committing too far forward, if you've got like Carlos or you've got somebody that's roaming forward. But for me, I'm going to choose Vieira. And as you can see here, one last example before we move on to manual tackling and pressing. You can see here again, the minute I switch off Vieira, he's tracking back himself. So when I lose control of him, he's tracking back himself. Now, the next thing I'm going to talk about is a lot of, a lot of people are asking me about this is should they use the, the shoulder charge or the L2 button to actually make a tackle, right? I would probably, uh, I'm not going to stay too long on this because I would say that if you are dependent on this, it's going to be very, very high risk, high reward, right? You will get the ball more often than not, but a lot of the time, if you're doing this and you're just spamming, you're just holding, depending on, on positioning, you're going to give away frees and penalties, which do add up. I would more concentrate on close the passing lanes quickly and effectively, right? So you can see here, I'm trying to counter or I'm trying to get the ball back. I'm on the I'm on the defense here. And you can see here that where I'm positioned in my center back partnership, one of them is dragged out, but I do close the gap, right? So we'll see a better example here now in a second. You can see that I get a chance here against the opponent. No passing lane, like he's nowhere near where the ball is being passed. And he's at sixes and sevens. And I do get a, a fairly easy enough finish, a lucky enough break, which you do get in my or in dream team every now and again. So again, here is kind of a mixture of the two, right? So so Paddy, Paddy V, who we just focused on with the anchoring, he's back in action. He gets the ball and he's going to bomb forward with it. He's going to drive the ball out wide. And then we're going to have a flick in. We're going to do a one touch. It's a three on three or a four, depending on which wing you want to use. Touch and go a Corona, the beast that is Corona. And his passing lane, he can't get near me, the opponent here, because I'm on the counter. And this is how you usually score most goals in Dream Team. If you've got fast wingers or you play out wide. Touch and go in around the corner of, his, of this sped up. Little flick back in to Romario and slot at home, right? Now, speaking of things that you need to stop to leak, stop leaking goals and stuff, right? I'm going to focus on one of, the, one of the hardest things to stop, depending on your skill level and depending on the skill level of people that do it, right? Is kind of scoring a goal from kickoff, right? So you will see here an example of me not being set for the kickoff. It's one touch pass and he gets it under control, but it's a great save by Donna for a change, right? Now we're going to rewind this back, right? So from here, I'm just after scoring a goal, as you saw, and then it's 1-0, and then this guy just, you know, pretty much spams it forward to Sammy Eto'o, right? It's a two-on-two. -two. I'm not set at the back. I'm just playing my flat 4-4-2, um, and that's, that, can, that can very easily catch you off guard, right? Now, we're going to get an example here of setting up properly. So it's against the same player. I'm after scoring a second goal. He bombs it forward again. Now look at the difference, right? Look at the difference here. I've completely closed down that gap. I've manually tracked back and my right back timber is going to come in, give it back in, and then we can go on the attack again. Now, the biggest thing I'm going to focus on here, lads, is team press, right? This is the new feature of the game, obviously, and the defending. And a lot of people are kind of using it. They're either using it too much with the sh shoulder charge and forgetting how they used to defend in PES 2021, 
or they're getting, using it, it's working in a couple of games, and then they're getting ripped apart by some people that just hold the ball. I love when I see people pressing like this, because it means that I can just hold the ball for an extra pass and take control of the situation and just out-possess him. You know what I mean? Possession him to death and just be able to do it. Now, when it works, and I'm showing you a couple of examples here, right? When it works, it's nice. Yeah, I'm going to be honest with you. It's nice. You see here with Maldini, I break it forward. But when it doesn't work, lads, this is this can go very, very wrong very, very quickly, right? And you'll see a lot of the time here i'm just ball watching here this is against a really good player yeah i'm up 4-1 but i got a lot of lucky breaks in this game and i played really really well to get those goals and then i nearly let the opponent back into it with 10 minutes left it's 4-2 then it becomes nearly 4-3 even though he is offside right i get lucky enough with that but watch where i'm concentrating on the ball the areas of the pitch i'm just chasing shadows i'm just chasing shadows i'm pressing way too high i'm team pressing way too high you can see here where am i going with Piaul? Where am I going with Ronaldinho? I'm just trying to get the ball back way too quick when I don't need to, leaving massive gaps open. And good players, lads, no matter what team they have, good players will expose you when you actually give them the space, right? You're going to get stupid stuff happening you in the game. You're going to get look unlucky breaks and lucky breaks. But, you know, don't make it easy on your opponent. Don't be giving him gaps that you can be just completely exploited and be leaking left, right and center like a leaky tap, right? Calling out the plumber. It's It's, you need to be competitive. You need to, like try and improve the whole time like you can see here it's just time and time again yeah i get a bit unlucky i'm up obviously uh three nil here and i get a bit unlucky i tried to i tried to do the manual offside trap right he doesn't he waits again a good player he waits and then the ball goes through my legs this is playing in the mls challenge cup you'll just see here i mean this is just kamikaze defending this is what not to do right this is what not to do you'll see that this is kind of from a couple of a couple of weeks ago when i was just learning the mechanics of the game i just completely lose my entire shape and chase him around like i'm chasing him around the garden and uh that's the result, right? Now, <clears throat> the last thing I want to focus on, lads, right, is just putting this all together, right? So we'll see here. I'm playing against a good opponent. Now, obviously, this is just the first kick off the game. And you can see here, right, he's chasing me, chasing me, chasing me. He wants to get his foot on the ball. He's chasing literally way too tight to me. He's not really defending the space. He's not really preempting where I'm going to be going with the ball. And I just wait, 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 wait. He slacks off, and it's a tidy finish into the corner, right? Now, goals like that that look easy and stuff like that, the biggest problem, I think, with that is chasing the ball and looking for the ball rather than looking for where the ball can go. Now, I know it can be frustrating. As I said, we already showed this clip. I win the ball back very nicely there. I'm on the break. It's a 3v2. I just need to pass in. He gets very unlucky there, as can happen. It's happened to me a lot of times before as well. But that is the end result. So what I would say to you, lads, right, is if you are struggling, right, I would focus on three huge areas of kind of like trying to improve yourself, right? Try and like, don't focus too much on what the, what he's doing with the ball. I mean, I've seen guys that will pass, you know, 20 passes along the back um, with their center back, spreading it out wide, going nowhere with the ball. And they could be one nil down, trying to frustrate you, trying to make you draw out, right? Don't go away from your main like plan. Don't go away from your actual like what you're trying to achieve. If you're a possession-based player and you go up 1-0, keep playing possession. If you're a possession-based player and you need to close down the game or you need to chase the game, then you can actually change things like on defense and you can change things with your tactics. You can manually put more players forward and stuff like that. But be patient, you know, and try and preempt where the ball is actually going to end up rather than just chasing you know, chasing from left to right like a headless chicken. That's the biggest thing I think that you need to focus on if you want to improve. Now, obviously, if you've got a God squad and you just want to roll the dice, as I said at the start of the video with the clips you're seeing there, you are going to come up against good guys and get smashed. You are going to smash guys as well. But, you know, anything can happen when you're playing Dream Team. You know, you've got a lot of a lot of issues and a lot of stuff that you need to deal with with online gaming. You've got responsiveness. You've got, you know, you've got like, um the, you know connection and latency where the hosting is you know where which where you're playing somebody all that sort of stuff but you know if you just want to improve at the game and you want to stop leaking easy goals and you want to actually improve defensively and be a solid opponent for whoever you're playing i think th these tips can work as i said if you guys want to see me do a you know definitive defending tutorial it might take me a while to do it and i might you know ask a couple of guys to help me out with it um 
to get more clips and stuff because I would probably have a different style of playing. But yeah, um, let me know. But for this, I think these tips will help you guys out. Setting up your team right, as I said, those three things. Setting up your team right, staying playing your own way and being confident on the ball and like picking your passes. And, you know, thirdly, not rushing, not panicking, not chasing the ball around like a headless chicken. So yeah, that'll be my tips for you lads. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know any feedback as always, so that I can improve and bring you guys better videos. And we will talk to you later in a bit. Let me know in the comments below if you've got any tips or if these helped you out anywhere at all. And make sure and share with somebody that if they're new to the series, because it can be a, a very daunting experience coming online against God squads and stuff. But if you do these tips, I think it should improve your squad and improve your gameplay a little bit. So that is it for me, lads. Don't forget to subscribe and let me know in the comments below any feedback. I will talk to you later. Peace.